Hi, I am Tom Pickup, and welcome to the Really Devil 07 podcast again for this special episode dedicated to the sensational Cue the Music show, the number one James Bond music tribute act. Now, you can find us, Really Devil 07, and listen in on iTunes and Spotify, and we are on all social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I believe Cue the Music are too. So simply search Really Devil 07 pod or Cue the Music show. Now, tonight, I'm joined by regular contributors and my, two of my three brothers. So I've got Matthew and I've got Harry here. Good evening, gents. Good evening, Very good evening. to you. Very good evening. Now, yes, so we are joined tonight by Warren Ringham, who is the compare, the, I don't know, the, the guy who started it all. And he'll tell us all about that journey to where we are today for Cue the Music. So if you don't know who they are, they are an extremely world-renowned tribute to the James Bond music. If you know anything about Bond music, you want to hear them, basically. Now, not only do they perform the songs from the films, but they also produce some of the uh, the brilliant score material, too, with a full orchestra, which, growing up, we, we absolutely loved. We had all the soundtracks and CD, and it's just amazing to hear them. So, yes, they've, they've performed across the globe for many years at venues, small, like intimate, small, private ones, and some huge venues as well. But they're now bowing out, so it's very sad to say. Um, we'll hear more about that uh, with a, a series of concerts across the UK. So, good evening, Warren. Great to see you. Good evening. Yeah. Uh, pleasure to be here. I'm really looking forward. I've never been interrogated by a family on one of <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, this will be a new experience. We're all family, Warren. We're all family. Yeah, yeah part of the Bond family. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It wasn't oh intended God. that way, really. It was, uh, it was just chance who who could uh, who could turn up on the night. But yeah. Uh, yeah. we're all it's delighted like to be here, Warren. The mm. Mitchell brothers do Bond. <laughs> <laughs> Mum will be on soon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was actually a musician. Yeah, she okay. she, she was actually uh, yeah she went to the Royal Academy of Music and she's wow. a, a piano did piano and flute and piano teacher for many years. Yeah. Mm. So, oh, um, awesome. She loves Bond music in that way. But yeah, yeah, I there bet. You. So, what? How did you? What are you in terms of your musician training? How did you get involved with all that? Then? Uh, well, I went to. Funny enough, I went to the Royal College of Music, um, yeah. mm. which is, you know, not twinned, but it's it's kind of the sister of the Royal Academy. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, when you say that, my ears kind of prick up uh, quite quickly. Um, but as I always sort of say on these on these podcasts, really, my my background came from coming in a long line of family members that were professional brass players um my great aunt Maisie was principal trombone of the Halley orchestra which oh, is yeah. Right. yeah um back in the i think the 40s or 50s and you know very famous um trombone player and then she was followed uh much later on in the century by my dad who was a professional trumpet player who played in the royal philharmonic orchestra mm -hmm. and the bbc symphony orchestra and uh, did quite a lot of film work, um, including Return of the Jedi and um, oh. it, it, Interview with a Vampire, all the oh. mad, all the original Mad Max films. Um, and if you're a football fan, he is one of the trend players on that Champions League theme. If you know the oh yeah oh, yeah, yeah. Handles, it's wow. Zadok the Priest based on that, isn't it? That's yeah. right. That's, yeah. that's very true. And um, I, I, I tell you a quick, really quick, funny story. Actually, not one I told before. So it's a nice new one for these podcasts, but it's exclusive. Not really bond, yeah, not really bond related though. But when he did that Champions League theme, it was one of the last times when the orchestras were offered the choice of either having a buyout where they could get a one-off fee or they could get royalties. Oh, and it was decided they put it to a vote, and the orchestra decided to go for the one-off fee, which was oh, quite a big fee. It was like you know, I might have been like 300, 400 quid, which 25, 30 years ago was mm, a yeah, lot of yeah. money. But you think <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. for that, I mean, who'd have been? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's oh, getting man. sung on the playground, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, but then, but then the other one that, that is relevant, uh, which is, which, are, which is really, really cool. Um, he actually was principal trumpet on one of the John Barry albums, about two John Barry albums. If you know the movie Ola, um, one and yeah. two. Mm -hmm. It's classical but, albums, yeah. Yeah, you can hear a few. Um, there's a few trumpet solos in there, which is my dad, which is like I'm wow. uh, like super proud of. Oh wow, um, that was amazing! Yeah, so I, I grew up with that, you know, just like really all around me, and um, had all this access to incredible um, teaching and and uh, you know just I mean uh, my my childhood was brought up around the orchestra and and 
sessions and I can remember being at places like CTS. I mean, there's a a good chance, and I'm not saying that I definitely did, but there's a good chance I could have been at some of those sessions. Um, But I mean, when I was young, you know, in my childhood, I I took those kind of things for granted. You just went along Mm. with, because it's your dad, it's it's work. You don't know any different. And it wasn't until kind of like I got older and I started to realize actually how privileged and lucky I was Mm. to do that, but it was too late to kind of go back and think, well, what ones did I actually did I go to but um but that's how I sort of really got into it and, and uh, when I kind of got to a point after school I went off to music college and from there my bond uh fandom kind of went into overdrive there was that I don't know if you I don't know how old you guys are whether you're a bit younger than me but there was a, a an I the ITV um run back in the 90s yes um, yeah. what did they call it it was called the that was it double O heaven or something yeah. like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 that sounds yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Do you remember they ran one film every single week, right? Yeah, yeah it was a Wednesday. Man. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It was a Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. And I had my video recorder at home. Oh, and wow. Every single yeah. film. And although I'd seen lots and lots of Bond films um, through my childhood, I hadn't seen them all. And that was the point when they ran that that series. And, mm. I, and that was when I just, just was you know, I was hooked, totally hooked. Oh, oh, and, the two things, and just quickly, sum up, yeah. the two things kind of married, they, they kind of married up music and Bond, and that's how cute the music was. was oh, Amazing. Well, then, so good. I was just going to say, did you realise, of course, that your dad had been working with John Barry? I mean, that's... No. I, do you know what? Tragic, like, my dad died in 99, and oh, I right. didn't actually piece it together that he was even on the movie oh. on soundtracks till some years after that. Um so yeah that that was that was a shame but like i said i mean, I, I don't really you know wallow in it or anything it, i'm more just happy that that i know that now and i got that to listen mm. to and as a huge john barry fan it's it's amazing that that yeah. you know have that link and he did that i'm sure be very proud of what you've done as well i mean mm. it's incredible mm. so Definitely. so, so. What, obviously it's a prerequisite if you form a bond you know concerts <laughs> uh, guy an orchestra and singers and everything you want you need to be a bond fan don't you so, uh, the, is it a prerequisite well, you is it, is it are, people joining it i don't the, do you know what there are quite a few cropping up now and and i, I see the, some of them doing quizzes and stuff and and i mean there was one, there's, i shouldn't say this really but there was one bond concert where someone had gone along to interview them and they did a little quiz and and two of the first two questions they asked them was what was the first ever james bond film and they had no idea and the <laughs> second question was what uh, what's the what's the actual name of the character q and they had no idea and i thought wow that is red <laughs> bottom man you know if you come <laughs> so we're pretty for- sad though aren't we i mean to a yeah. casual fan you don't know an awful lot do you no, but but I think though, if you're running a show like ours, I think that I've always sold it as um, some fat by fans for fans. Yeah. So, what would I want to go see if I was going to see a Bond concert? What would I, as a fan, want yeah. to see? And that's always my starting point. My baseline is that I want to give you guys something that I know that mm. you want. And I think if you haven't got that real authenticity, you can't you can't like blag that you can't make that up. You haven't got that real authenticity of like thirty years of just watching those films hundreds and hundreds of times yeah. and listening to all the podcasts and going to events and going to locations and all that stuff. If you haven't got all that behind you, then really all you're doing is chucking some Bond songs together and mm. and, and slapping a price mm. on the ticket. You know, th- there's I think what we do is. Um, certainly done from much more point of view of 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 love and authenticity and and you know really trying to provide a like create a space where we as you as a bond fan you can really go and enjoy that love and and experience Mm -hmm. it and feel like you're in a in a place where people get it and and they Mm -hmm. share that same Mm -hmm. passion that you do because you i mean there are orchestras who every now and then we'll do a bond night you know yeah. we'll, we'll do but that's not the same this is this is your you know very being isn't it it's it is it is and, and, you know in some ways you know that's been the hardest thing is is getting people to understand where we're different because when you kind of compare cue the music which is in essence most of the shows it's 13 piece band versus the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, for example. I mean, my my love for the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra goes back 30, 40 years. Wow. Good evening, everyone. Good, Good evening. evening. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Great. <laughs> nice to hear from you all. Yeah, you too, Caroline. We're yeah. absolutely mm. bowled over that you're that you're here with us tonight. It's a great surprise for us. You well, better introduce so you better introduce her to your listeners, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this this this, if you don't know, is the the host of the Bradford concert of CUNY Music. It's Caroline Munro, who of course Woo. played Naomi in uh, Spy Love Me. So, I, I can't, again, I can't believe it. Yeah, <laughs> this is incredible. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's lovely to be joining you tonight. I mean, it's very muggy down here in London. Yeah. Where is it? Or how is it where you are? We're up north, and it's it's very muggy here. It is. Me. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a lovely summer's evening here in Yorkshire, where I am. <laughs> are you actually in Bradford? Are you actually in Bradford? I love close. Bradford. I'm in actually... Leeds. I'm, I'm close to Bradford. Um, and I've oh, got my I ticket, and I will be uh, seeing the concert in Bradford without a doubt. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Maybe I'll meet you after or before. Or... Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'd love that. We'd love to It'll meet It'll be amazing. It'd be brilliant. Yeah. I love Leeds. I spent a lot of time in Leeds at YTV, Yorkshire yes. Television. Yeah. Yeah. A good few years ago, but yeah, love it. Nice place. Wow. We've got one chap on our podcast called John, who is honestly your number one fan. So he, <laughs> yeah. he, he'd love to meet you at Bradford. He would absolutely love that. <laughs> yeah, he would. <laughs> oh. Will he be there? Will he be listening now? He won't be uh, listening now, but he will. We'll, we'll oh, no. tell, he won't believe it when we tell him that we've spoken to you. He'll, no, yeah. He'll, yeah. He'll, he'll be very jealous. But <laughs> yeah, he'll be raging. Hopefully, he can meet him in Bradford. Yeah. Really I hope so. Hope he's there. That would be <laughs> yeah. lovely to meet him. That would be really good. <laughs> oh, well, thank yeah, you for I'm joining us. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. Not at all. So, Warren, how did you get Caroline involved in all this? It's amazing. Well, um, it, it kind of just all happened probably about five years ago, I think now, Caroline, wasn't it? We must we have at, been, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, we met at a Bond event and um, we, we just hit off a great relationship with, along with Madeline Smith, who was at the same event. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. we, you, you both sort of, I, well, it's, I, it's easier for you to say than me say, but I, I, you kind of became f- fans first, didn't you, of what we were doing? We so did. I remember the event so well it was actually at pinewood studios wasn't it do you remember yeah, yeah. And, and we a lot of people had sort of gone off and and we because we we we'd heard you and we, we just came to see it and we were so enthusiastic because you're so amazing i mean the band we were just absolutely blown away by the music and and you and you know everybody or the singers and it was a whole different thing so yes, we became big fans of yeah. your of the music. Absolutely. Totally. Yeah, and then you, you came along to I don't know another show, a couple of shows. Um, yeah. We were doing, and and we just became good friends. And I sort of said, look, would you do us the honour of coming and comparing? Which was funny because mm. you were a bit, you were a bit sort of, oh, are you sure? And it's, you know, it's yeah, I, I am. I always get, amazing. So I always good. get. Yeah, I get elephants in my tummy. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but but I actually when no, I I love it because the audiences are so warm and so you know they they're just up for the the a really good time and amazing musicianship and the singing and mm. and Warren's you know playing it it just it all just comes together and of course the tunes are so classic they're just so wonderful so um what's not to like it and to be a little part of it is wonderful it's great. Yeah, I no. sometimes get it wrong. I sometimes come on when I shouldn't do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do various things. I'm very dyslexic, but I love to be part of it. And Warren kind of goes, you know, he's, he's very, very good. He's, he's brilliant with me anyway. <laughs> but you, yeah. but the other lovely thing about it is, though, Caroline, is that with yourself and, and Maddie and, and Caroline Bliss, is that you're all <laughs> able to bring your wonderful experiences to yeah. the show and tell <laughs> Mm. Tell the audience Aww. what it's like to work on a Bond film, and for all of us, all, yeah. all the four of us geeks here on the yeah. call, now, <laughs> you know, all we all remember those <laughs> iconic scenes that that oh. you did, and oh. and it's so cool to hear you talking about them, and that's what you get to on the shows, isn't it? You get a little bit of you telling some of your I funny stories, you do a little bit of an insight, yes, to, as to what it, yes, and, and and yes, for all of us, all of us different experiences, but all of us amazing experiences because. They're just kind of classic, aren't they? The Bond films are classic, mm. classic mm. music. Oh, and, yeah. And um, obviously, my Bond was Roger. Um, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I <laughs> absolutely adored him. 
Um, well, yeah. for me, he is the best. But, he is the best. I mean, yeah. all of them bring, yeah. yeah, they all bring something completely different. They all do their own take on it. As do the women, too. You know, the, yeah. the women are, mm. you, you know, the women bring their own, uh, whatever it is, their, their own personalities to the role, within the role. And as did the Bond, you know, Roger, he was fantastic. And I think Spy was one of his, I believe he's been quoted as saying that that was his yeah. favorite Bond for him. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, one of ours too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, that's nice. Caroline, can I ask you? Does it feel extra special when um, cue the music play both "Nobody Does It Better" and then Bond seventy seven, particularly Bond seventy seven, <laughs> because that is blasting away when it's the <laughs> helicopter chase yes. and the you know so the lotus it's, scene. It's a, it's a car chase. Yeah, yes, I find that really exciting. In fact, I think the one time I was listening to it so much that I actually forgot to come in and cue the music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was brilliant. So you were back in the helicopter. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that, they're flying. I thought this time I'm going to get him. But, um, yeah, no, it, it's very exciting and nobody does it better. Uh, it's Terry, Terry Schultz that sings it. It's just it's beautiful. I mean, her, her, the vocals on the uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, everything. Nobody does it better. One of the times that Maddie didn't come on, she forgot to come on, and I, so as quick as a flash, I went on. I went on the microphone to the audience, and I said, "I think she's still locked in the wardrobe." <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was good. Very good. And then she heard that, she thought, "Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's the thing." Yes, because you get so carried away listening to it. You know, you're you're listening yeah. to it. You forget you're actually a bit of a part of it. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh. I should just get chucked on, I believe. But yeah, no, it must... it's, it's, it's a wonderful show to be part of. But it makes it even more authentic that you, this is proper Bond music when you've got Bond girls actually, you know, comparing it. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I suppose it does really, doesn't it? Kind of gives it a yeah. It does. You're right. Yes, it, it actually I've got, does. I've got it's, close it's... friends who've been to a few Q the music. Um, concerts and they were telling me recently mm. that yeah they're coming to the Bradford one and this is before I got tickets and they're like yeah you know they do all the songs all the music and all that and you'll never believe it Caroline Monroe was comparing and that oh. was like the, the icing on the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Caroline, I knew it was a good decision <laughs> to get yeah. you on board they're <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh. not coming for us they're coming for you <laughs> oh, that's very sweet no not at all <laughs> no it, go, it goes hand in hand as I say to be a little part of it is very special, you know, mm. nice. And to hear it all again, I'm I'm dancing on the side. I'm watching them from the mm. from the wings, and I'm just dancing on the side. I love it, <laughs> singing away. As long as the music doesn't stop and my I, my mic turned on and suddenly hear this awful boom, <laughs> that would be d- awful. But um, yeah, no, it's, it's a brilliant show. Highly recommend it. Caroline, can you remember mm. the first time you heard Nobody Does It Better? Was it at was it at the premiere or a film or something? Or did you because Maddie heard Live and I, Die on the stage before anybody else heard it? But oh. did, do you remember when you heard yours? You you mean you mean um, uh, uh, actually the the premiere seven seven seventy seven, which was our premiere oh. in um, oh, wow. uh, Odie and Leicester Square which is very strange. And <laughs> and that's the first time I heard it. My, oh, I just thought it was incredible. That is the first time I heard it. And all the audience stood up when the Union Jack, when Roger leapt off the oh. um, the side of the mountain and the wow. Union Jack, and, and they actually stood up and cheered, as did oh. I. Because I, yeah. I, <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. It was, it was wonderful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It really was, but that's the first time I heard it, and it's a brilliant song because it's you kind of hear it everywhere, really. 
mm. um, in supermarkets. I hear it. I still hear it. Yeah. Um, and I, I've, I was with a lady. She was she's called Lady Bond. I was with a, um, at the weekend in in uh, Lake Lucerne. We were doing a Bond oh. myself and um, Martin Beswick. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, beautiful. oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. They had a whole thing, and it was a black tie event, and everybody was oh. dressed. And there was a lady called Lady Bond, who's a German singer, um, singer performer. She plays piano, and oh, I've seen her. Nobody yeah. does it better. I have to look her up. Yeah, yeah. She, was, mm. she was so good. It was it was lovely. Very different take, you know, quite a yeah. modern sort of jazzy take, but but very different. And yes, it was so good to hear it again. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, so you, that you're, was you're, you're, yours, isn't it? I, it's still on, you know, on Smooth FM. It was in their top 500, whatever of all time. It's, I think, it's the one that's most played on the radio these days, mm. even now. And it's what five years, yeah. isn't it? I think. Yeah, the anniversary. Really I think it years. is. Yeah. Mm. Is it really 45 years? Yeah, golly. I think so yeah. Mm. Wow. <laughs> kind of seems like yesterday. If I look back, I mean, yeah. if I look back at it, but yeah. It does and it doesn't. It's, it's strange where the years have gone, but but yes, it's still there, and you know my memories are still with me. And the and of course the, the proof is that the, the films are still being played and and the music is is still being, mm. you know, hailed as wonderful. So it's, yeah. it's great. Well, look, all of the music, you know, all the Bond yeah. songs. Well, they're all on at the cinema. I don't know whether you know they're showing one a week at the moment. So are they? Just, yeah. Mm. So well, just have a look because the Spy Love Me will be on in a few weeks actually. Yeah, um, yeah. Is it because it's the 60th anniversary, isn't it? Yes, yeah, that's what they do. Yeah, yeah, isn't it? It's it's yeah. Yeah. Oh, now, a few weeks ago, and they're, they're doing, they're working yeah. all the way through. 18th yeah. of June. Oh, really? Yeah. 18th. Uh, Where about? Just uh, everywhere. Every, in everywhere. I think it's Odeon, uh, Odeon, Odeon and View, Odeon, Cineworld yeah. and View. Yeah. So I don't know about oh, Cineworld. Wow. I think Odeon and View. Mainly Odeon and View. Yeah. Odeon. Yeah. Maybe well, I should go and try and see it at the Odeon in Leicester Square again. Well, we yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> That'd be cool, we yeah. create Just turn up, up yeah, and it. everyone will go mad, yeah. won't they? It'll be brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. Believe me, I don't <laughs> think so. But, but oh, yeah. yes, I could certainly listen to it. That would be nice. <laughs> yeah. well, Warren, they are, you are performing at Hope at these concerts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah, you can't not do No Does It Better. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. Bond 77 these days is tricky because the thing is, is that every time an, another Bond film gets made, which is, by the way, obviously amazing. Not as often now. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. no, but when they do, it's like it's another song on the set list. You yeah. know, the yeah. Bond is yeah. running into a two-day yeah. before much longer. Yeah. A weekender. Yes, we'll be doing a week. <laughs> yeah. So like you to... do, you, you obviously do the new one, don't you? The, yeah. the, the new yeah. film. Yeah. Yes, of course you do. Billie Eilish, yeah. But it gets harder because yeah. we like doing the special items, and you know you, mm. you, you yeah. have to be careful because it does get a bit long. That's what I'm saying. The West, <laughs> our final show in the West End, we're gonna we, we're not gonna do all of the songs. We're gonna cut a few, keep obviously all the the really big hitters, and and then put in a load of really cool other music as well. But oh, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll tell you, I, I won't tell you too much about that last program. No. It'll be a surprise, but nobody does it better. We'll still be in there, of course. And yeah. oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You'd boo if you didn't play it probably. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's oh, absolutely amazing. Now yeah. we're looking forward to that. And are you, are you at you're at Bradford and one other? Is that right, Caroline? I am. I'm Bradford and then um the one in um in London. Yeah. With oh, with right. the other oh. girls, with the two with with Maddie and Caroline. Of two course. Carolines, one Maddie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh fantastic. Yeah, no, that should be great. No, I'm looking forward to that. Because I missed the I missed the London one the last you know the last time hadn't been very well so I missed that one oh, but um, but Caroline yes and Caroline Caroline Bliss admirably stepped in and is fantastic she's a lovely lady oh, too yeah. she's lovely Maddie I've known I've known Maddie since the sixties so we go back a long yeah. way <laughs> mm. there's, a, there's like a sisterhood of Bond ladies isn't there as it seems to it be. actually is. It, you know, it really is. And as I was saying before, everyone is so different. But when we get together, it, 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 it we really do bond. You know, it's a bonding yeah. that we do. Yeah. It's, like, it's sort of like a club, but it isn't a club. You know, not a precious club, not a not a pretentious club. But it's a it's a, a it's a lovely lovely thing because we did the charity event and there were so many. Trina Park flew over from. Yeah, uh, we've spoken to her. Um, yeah, she's lovely. Yeah, Trina. She, she is great. Trina and Mariam yeah. came up and 
yep. Carol Ashby. So many came along for that Bond event two weeks. Well, not last weekend, the weekend before. And it was so oh. special. You know, it was amazing. It was so good. Martine Mar- Mar- Peswick's a really good friend of yours as well, isn't she? Oh. She's my, yeah, my bestie. Oh. Yeah, she's, oh, yes. she's fantastic. Wow. I was with her in, in Lucerne. So, yes, yes. We go back a long way, but she's mm. fabulous. She's so good. She's so strong and yeah. so yeah. beautiful, but funny and witty. And yeah, they, they all are. They're all so different, the women. They're fantastic. And I was with Jenny Hanley was there. Um, Valerie Leon. This was at Talking Pictures when we did the Talking mm. Pictures. So there was, um, yeah, there was Valerie, um, Maddie, myself, Martine, and Jenny Hanley. Um, we were all at an event. The, the weekend before as well <laughs> on the Sunday yeah yeah it was great to see them all oh. brilliant you, you must be sad though that cue the music are coming to an end yes I mean never say never <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying that nothing to worry you I, you, you, could, you have your own thoughts it's just my thoughts never say never but uh, no, 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 we know yes. that. Sean taught us that, if nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you exactly. know, this, 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 you is, know, this, is, this know. is it. This is it. And, you know, if something changed in the future, then something yeah. changed. But I can't, you know, at the moment, I, you know, certainly no. for the next several years, this, you know, I've got yeah, kids, to, kids exactly. to think about. Yeah. I was going to say, everybody's got lives to lead and yeah. things to do. But music's in your blood, Warren. Yeah, so absolutely. It, you know, yeah. it's always there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and there's other things. I mean, that you, you have the show band. You still have the show band. You still yeah, that? that's kind of, yeah, it's party, like a party wedding band. But yeah, that yes. we'll still do. We'll still with the key of the music. I guess we'll still do private events if they crop up and things. You know, I was going to say, work. of course you will. Yeah, if it's yeah. Like someone's party or something, then exactly. We'll, they can pull it together. We'll do that. But it's the theatre exactly. shows that are. That it's the big theatre, but the theatre's changed so much. I mean, everything during the pandemic. I mean, yeah, yeah. basically everything stopped and and all the actors that i knew nobody was working you know and that hurts when you don't work obviously yeah that's right because it's not like a normal job you just you know you, everybody's got bills to pay yeah. <laughs> so it, it it's a hard one that it really really is but thankfully things are starting to to get back together again which is really good you know it's good for yeah. for everybody yeah you've had, you've had a few concerts i mean in the first sort of leg uh, the, yeah, the, the, the um, yeah we, we did uh older shot and lincoln folkestone um that all yeah they all did a lincoln was a disaster actually for, oh. sales, <laughs> for ticket sales but um the older shot sold out which was amazing so that, mm. oh that's great yeah. he and did Bradford, that with maddie or uh, older shot was i think it was caroline mm. I think, uh, Carol, the other Caroline. <laughs> Carol. <laughs> other Caroline. Money Penny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, Money Penny. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wonderful. Caroline, thank you. I know you can't stay for long, but uh, thank you so much for. Yeah, yeah, thank in. you. No, yeah. not at all. Not at all. It's lovely Wait to see nights. you all. And, yeah. and I look forward to meeting you. Yeah, see you in Bradford. Yeah, we, we will see yeah. you in Bradford. Yeah. We can't wait. We can't wait. Fabulous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, take care, and Warren, talk to you very soon. Thank you, um, And have a, a no, it's not the weekend yet. Anyway, have a, <laughs> have a lovely evening, <laughs> and talk soon. Take care. Bye-bye, Thanks Carol. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. When we first started doing the shows, both Maddie and Caroline, we'd see, we'd, after the show, we always do like a bit of a meet and greet. And the guys would come up, Bond fans would come up, and I would be sort of, st- I, I kind of try and just chaperone them a little bit and just just kind of, you know, um, I don't want to say like be a bouncer or anything, but I just kind of just, yeah. I'm just there to support mm-hmm. them really, as well as chatting to people. And sometimes people come up and they are literally shaking yeah. when they speak to her. And I'm like, and because I know them really well now, and they, you know, they're, they're almost like a, adopted aunt all of them really yeah. really, really, really good friends <laughs> now and it, and but they're just so down to earth all of them and so approachable yeah and um you know you see people that they're just genuinely like terrified and in awe and, it, and it, you just feel like saying look it's okay just be yourself because they're, they're just so 
cool you know they're, yeah they're... from my experience they seem to really understand the fandom as well the fan base that they they, yeah. they they're so like you said approachable and yeah and they're not just um strictly all about the film they were in either they sort of once they're in one film they feel like they belong to the franchise and therefore they belong mm. to the fans and it's just one huge thing that everyone's a part of yeah. um and uh, you know on their part that's it's so humble of them yeah mm. definitely they, they really are and and um it it's it's just it's just lovely to see them in action really it's you know i would say don't be your heroes but as you say all yeah. the bond i think 99 percent of all the bond guys i've met from the bond world have all just been wonderful yeah. people yes yeah. so well, maybe it's because you know the broccolis and they, were, they treated everyone so well didn't they on set it was a real family feel on set and mm. it's just spread and i think they feel part of that world and they want to give a lot back you know they're they're really mm. proud though they're really proud of what of what they've done because it's it's something you you would be proud of you know the legacy of the bond films it's one of the few sort of franchises which is has been going so long now that's yeah. just I, mm. The other thing that was interesting, though, as well, is that uh, chatting to them, it's only really something that's kind of come around in the last 10 years or so. Like prior to that, they were they were saying that they hadn't really they weren't really involved in the community and doing these fan events and things yeah. they weren't really happening. And I think that um, I think it was kind of come as Karen on a Maddie said this, but things like the Blu-rays coming out and yeah. DVDs coming out and people having access to them at home were kind of what really kicked it all off again. Mm. Plus, then the arrival of the internet and social media and yeah, that's yes. mm. yeah, kind of really kicked it all into. So now that the whole uh, sort of signing um, circuit and, and those meet and greets and stuff has kind of opened up a whole new area that wasn't there before. Mm. Oh, fantastic. Well, we, I mean, Caroline mentioned obviously that she's she's compared some of the um, the concerts. W was she there? I mean, you, it's an amazing thing to have done, but it's also sad because you, you performed at Roger Moore's official memorial event, didn't you? Yeah, we did. We didn't have a compare or anything. We we did. Uh, what did we do? We did three three things. We did all time high oh, um, wow. for your eyes only, and then we did. Bond 77 as everyone was walking out because that was his play on playoff music for his um, one man tour. That he oh, was yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, they, they asked us if we'd play that on the way out. And what was really funny is that, as I say, it was supposed to be as people were leaving, but we started playing Bond 77 and no one would leave. Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a few, few did mm. the, the main thing, but but a lot of people still. I I can still remember people like um, Gloria Henry just just stood there, just going, "Wow, <laughs> like yes, this is awesome." Yeah. <laughs> um, but the whole day was just it was just incredible, very emotional mm. and surreal, and you know, it was such a private, intimate event for close friends and family. And I've always said I felt like we were there representing fans because it wasn't yeah. mm. open to fans or anything it wasn't like you get a ticket or something but mm. yeah. you know we'd been almost given the golden ticket of being asked to, to play and uh, you know Roger Moore was very much my bond growing up he's yeah. I would say he's not my favorite now but growing up as a child that was in that that was my era mm. um so he was my my bond on from my childhood so um I felt like I was you know there representing everybody who's a fan to, to mm. do it so. Was that nerve-wracking? My word, it must... Yeah, it was, actually. Uh, and you hear the music have this... The, the guys in the band have this incredible thing of no matter what, at whatever the bar I set them, whatever the, the, the challenge is, they always seem to not only meet the challenge but exceed it, whether it was on a Majesty's Secret Service 50th oh, yes. anniversary mm -hmm. yeah. or Roger Moore's event or, or other things that we've done in the past as well where it's been really high pressure... And we, I don't, I don't know what it is because it's not something that we talk about, or we even, I have to kind of side people up. But it just seems that whenever we're in that situation, everyone just goes right. This is what I, this is what we're doing it for. You know, this is why I became a musician. Mm. For moments like this, they they rise to that challenge. And mm. there was just this moment when we were waiting to start the first piece, and I was conscious of the fact that you know there was royalty there. There was Barbara Broccoli and Michael G. Wilson. There was all these different <laughs> guys from the Bond world. Goodness me. David Williams and I stood there on stage and I, and I had the moment where I was like, wow, this all started because of an idea I had, you know, back in the 90s. And here yeah. we are. And then it wow. suddenly, I suddenly thought, you know, I mean, I'm really I'm like such a stickler for detail and 
and make sure everyone's got everything they need. We've got the best equipment. They've, the parts are immaculate. Everyone gets links to the parts, demos. They can learn everything. But as we sort of stand there waiting to play, I was thinking, there is literally nothing I can do at this point. I am <laughs> totally reliant on the people around me not like bottling it, you know, not yeah. see it, sort of being mm. rabbit in the headlights. And And I suddenly thought, if it all goes wrong, it's all my fault because like <laughs> me that said we can do this, you know, and it's me mm. that put it all together. And I, for the first time in, and only time in my entire life, I suddenly had this tightness across my chest and I thought, wow, this must be like what it feels like before a heart attack or something, you know? <laughs> um, but then we started the first note of the first number and everyone just, just went, you know, went for it. And it was, it was mm. brilliant. But I'll tell you something else actually, it just occurred to me. One of the other funny things that happened we were waiting to start this um, memorial service and it was only about an hour and we were playing halfway through it. And my lead singer, um, Matt Walker, the male, and of course we weren't doing any male songs because it was the two female songs, yeah. but there was, he also does percussion. He's an amazing percussionist. Mm. And his wife was expecting a baby and she was, I think she was due five days after the event. So and he was, he literally lived about 20 minutes away. So we're like, um, should we, was, yeah, let's just take a gamble because you know, it, it'll be okay. You know, chances are you're either going to know by then, or it's going to be, it's, you know, be really unbelievable if it happened like at that moment, <laughs> of course, oh, no. five minutes to the point, I think it was like three o'clock start five to three. I kid you not. His phone goes no. and it's saying my waters are just broken. Oh no way! No, no. So no, no. I was like, "Look, mate, just go. We'll manage yeah. that percussion." And uh, he, so he said, he, "It was a twenty-minute drive." And he, he always tells the story brilliantly. And he, I said, "No, it was a twelve-minute drive that day." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, were have, they were having a home birth, and I think he got yeah. back just in time. And, and apparently, the midwife open the front door and of course he's there stood there in full dj <laughs> and she looked him up and down she said well if i'd known we were getting dressed up i'd have worn my frock <laughs> <laughs> but yeah literally just got in time just to just to catch oh amazing my yeah. word oh, wow, that's traumatic as well <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so you said how you how you started so what where did the idea come from then um well, I already ran a, Karen mentioned it a minute ago. I already ran a, um, a party band called the London Show Band. And it was very much just doing wet, kind of typical weddings, birthday parties and that sort of thing. And I was kind of looking around for something to add as like a second string to it that was, that had a real strong identity. And at the time I was just coming to the end of my time at music college and they had a a James Bond soundtrack CD that was just right on a loop. It was the songs just on a loop in, in the students bar. And I was already massive Bond fan by that massive Bond music fan. And I was, and I thought, what about doing a James Bond tribute band? No one's ever done it anywhere in the world. And I thought, you know, why don't I create that? And, and that's really in a nutshell where it sort of came from. I mean, I spent about two years transcribing the music and even from the word go, although it was predominantly 90% all songs, I think before I'd even finished all the songs, I'd already uh, got into the set Bond 77, uh, Flight Into Space. Oh. And, yeah. Uh, I think we had a uh, capsule in space and maybe one other that's slipping my mind. At the oh yeah. 007. Yeah. 007. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, so they, those ones were always in there from, from the start. And, I can remember when we did the first couple of rehearsals and there were guys there that were bond um appreciate you know appreciated yeah. bond i wouldn't call them bond fans like us and mm. they were like why are we doing this 007 and cap captions but who's gonna know <laughs> yeah. in the space you know and i was like no 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 you got it this is amazing music you got to trust me yeah um and we would do events in the early days where we would play for a a bond themed event and we would be playing caption space and you could see people going what is this? <laughs> and it wasn't really till we started putting those videos out onto youtube of all the songs and the other cues i mean some yeah. of the early videos when i look back at them now I mean, if they're not on youtube and i've still got them on a hard drive i could cringe when i look at them because with they're like you know the difference between where we were 18 years ago and now is just hmm. you know, day and night but they did serve a purpose because 
even back then, um, we were getting the really strong recognition all around the world with Bond fans that were kind of becoming aware of it. Um, and then, you know, one thing kind of led to another. And then eventually, uh, about probably about eight, eight years ago now, we did a, another set of videos with a better high quality of, of video capture and playing and stuff. And then it just really started to, to snowball quite quickly with just, we just really got picked up by, you know, podcasts like yourselves and all around the world, people started showing an interest, especially as, you know, I, I'm quite active in the community myself. I've done quite a few different Bond music podcasts and I, I really enjoy talking about it and I really enjoy engaging and going along to events where time, you know, and, and commitments uh, permit. And um, yeah, it just kind of really, really went from there. We got invited to a few things like playing at Bond Stars at Pinewood and then the Roger Moore Memorial and then on a massive Secret Service 50th anniversary. And all of these things just, just beyond my wildest dreams, really. But they've all kind of fed into the journey. Please tell us more about the the Peace Gloria concert. Uh -huh. I can't believe it. Just, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, I I try. You, you, it's one of those things where you can't even find the words to describe just how incredible it was. I mean, I. It's no word of exaggeration to say, with the exception of my children being born, it was the most incredible experience of my life, yeah. the most incredible weekend I've ever had. Um, because if you think about the fact that we were celebrating a 50th anniversary with of, of a Bond film with the main lead actor there and then other cast and crew and people like um, John Glenn and what have you there, um, at the actual location where it was filmed, <laughs> which is also, you know, you could take a location, but then you take probably the real mecca for Bond fans, I think. There's probably a yeah. couple, but that one probably sits in the top three, mm. the top one. Yeah. And then you put it all that into the melting pot. It's just a one-off. Like, it will never, nothing like it will ever happen again. You're never mm. going to get all those mm. things line up. You know, you're never going to get a Bond, a former Bond at an event, especially not a 50th anniversary one now. So, it was mm. it was just a once in a lifetime opportunity, and it was, you know, the two hundred or so people that were there that come from all over the world. It it was like you could just see the release, the collective release valve just going off all weekend, and it was, it was just an, an unbelievable high. I, I yeah, I I can't really I can't really use any more words to describe yeah. it than that. I'm mm. just so honoured, yeah. so glad that I was there. Precious things love has in store. We have all the love in the world. If that's all we have, you will find we need nothing more. I've said this a few times, but afterwards, I really struggled for quite a while to find where my point in the rest of my life, what the point in the rest of my life was. Yeah, yeah. 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 It was such a high and it came, I think everyone that was there, I talked to a few people and they all felt it. It was like, yeah. how, we're, we're never going to experience yeah. anything like that again. Like, yeah. what, then, the what's, lockdown and all that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> even, but even before, I mean, before lockdown, it was, you know, and you know what the thing that actually turned it around for me and I thought, there are still some good things to do out there. <laughs> Was the um, uh, the secret cinema? Did you guys any of you guys do? The no, uh, we, Not I mean we yet. are a bit bit far away. We are going yeah. to the Charles uh, to see License to Kill, so that's one we're really looking forward to. But yeah, Secret Cinema sounds unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Was that for Casino Royale? It was incredible. Yeah. I was three times yeah. in the end, and it was every time was a different experience because mm. you got to go around and and they had the absolute spitting image of people from the film characters from the film so you you know you could find yourself talking to i don't know um my mind's going blank now but um any character any character from from the film the chief well i ended i in the third time i went i ended up playing across the poker table from him 
because <laughs> I'm um, like scary, and intimidating. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, I didn't even know how to play poker, so I lost straight. I just put. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 My wife yeah. was with me on that one. She's like, you know, I said, I don't care. I'm playing the yeah. sheep. Yeah. <laughs> the Abbas inhaler and everything. I'll be happy if I get out of here alive. Let alone, I don't care whether I'm yeah. alive or not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know if he actually had an inhaler, but yeah, I bet he did have it as a prop. I bet you. Yeah, I bet you if you it, you know I bet you he pulled it out, but I didn't actually see him. <laughs> him with it. Just tell. But, yeah. they, but you got like kind of little missions to go <laughs> off, and go mm. off and do as well. All oh, right. But you every time you went, you could actually have a different experience if you wanted it. Mm. it. It was unbelievable. So yeah, that was that was the point. Was like, oh okay, so yeah, there, there are still some things in life that uh yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is this obviously warrants from your experience being you know the person uh, leading the orchestra and putting that. On a Majesty's Secret, so that special event on, but like you mentioned, the two hundred fans that made that that you have made that experience them yeah. one of the most special moments of their life, mm. and you know well, that's what a that, little part. There were so many well, things. I mean, yeah, I'm sure, but yeah. but you know, it's obviously testament to the amazing music from the the, the Bond yeah. films and and everything yeah. like that. But it's what you're doing is bringing that music to the fans in. A, yeah, you know that we don't get any other opportunity to sit and and enjoy and absorb that music like like sort of tom said before you know songs yes and a few tribute nights from orchestras but when you're kind of a dedicated uh, orchestra that are yeah. putting this on for a dedicated fan base it's something yeah. more it's something far more special and you, like mm. like i started by saying you've created something that will live with those fans forever which is you know huge huge congratulations warren Oh, thank, thank you so much. One of the things that we did actually there was that we had 20 minutes of music from the film. Oh, so yeah, yeah. We did things like um, uh, This Never Happened to the Other Fella, Stop yeah. Jace, Try. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of the cues that we did in there. Um, there's you know, quite a few. And obviously we did we, talk, we have all the time in the world. What about, do you know, Christmas trees? Was that? <laughs> <laughs> la, la, um, la, la, la. <laughs> it's funny you should say that so we were going to do it as one of the encore numbers and the and how cool would this have been all the angels of death that were there and oh, there was yeah. probably five of them Whoa. we'd line them up and they were going to come and sing the <laughs> oh. part. but the evening went on so long that, that they, oh. they got one of the cable cars down and by the time we got there they were like oh they've gone they've gone to bed so <laughs> <laughs> And but they'd rehearsed it and everything. They, they were taking it so seriously. I was like, "Look, you don't. We don't need to rehearse it. Just come up, and all you got to do is go la 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 la." <laughs> and if you if you, you know, and as you know from the recording, it's not exactly beautifully sung or anything, well, is it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, would you say that that is your favourite Bond score, film score, or you know, and also including the songs in that as well? Uh, with, yeah, they're, no, they're two for me that I would categorize them differently. So, my favorite score would be, and it's over the last couple of years, it's, it's jostled between Thunderball and Majesties, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I both think outstanding. Probably, yeah, I think it probably is Majesties now. Uh, if it was Thunderball for a very, very long time, but mm. I think all my experiences of, of doing uh, Majesties has kind of probably maybe just elevated it slightly. Yeah, yeah. Songs may be slightly differently now, I think. I think License to Kill is my favourite to perform. Diamonds oh. is my favourite to uh, oh, the original. Yeah. What What about all of you guys? What scores and songs are, are you fans of? Um, well, I don't. I would always go for a John Barry score. I I, I find it really difficult. The two that you've mentioned are, are absolutely incredible. Then, um, as you go through, like Moonraker, I'm a big fan of. You no, know, I'm a big fan of his final three scores as well. Yeah, you know, in the John yeah. Glenn films. I think they're absolutely magnificent. And even yeah. by the end for Living Daylights, you know, he's writing three original song, or co-writing mm. three original songs. And something we bleat on about, and I bleat on about what 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 I love is a composer who co-writes the the theme song so that the melody then is is yeah. incorporated so magnificently mm. within the score. Yeah. And I think the last time we had that properly was um David Arnold for You Know My Name, which works really well. So yeah, I, I'm sorry. I've, I've, <laughs> there's a broad brush answer there, but yeah. What about, what about, what about Tom and Harry? Go on, Harry. I, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if I could choose. I, I probably, I would um, agree with math. Obviously, it's definitely John Barry. Um, and oh, I don't, 
I honestly can't say. There's the 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 earlier ones are sort of. Um, I, I, I honestly don't know. The early ones are sort of richer and deeper and sort of um, extremely special. But the sneak, when you approach those later ones, the John Glenn ones that Matt mentioned, then you're sort of getting electric guitars in there, like on A View to a yeah. Kill. Mm. It, the way it sort of evolved excites me. Um, and it's kind of a different kind of action music. Um, I don't know, because... <laughs> It's funny, like when we would, when we were young children, we'd put on a soundtrack and sort of play fight to it and things like that. And I think those the 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 latter John Glenn type ones really get you up for doing a play fight, you know, pretending mm. on atop the Golden Gate Bridge and things like that. Yeah, um, it's it's a very one, very difficult one to answer, but uh, I, I've not answered probably. <laughs> for me, I think. Well, nearly all of them, for all 25, are amongst the best soundtracks of any film. And it, and even, you know, like the Bill Conti for Eyes Only, I, I, lo- I wouldn't change it. You know, I'd, uh, obviously um, you would always want John Barry there, mm. but the Licence to Kill one is perfect for that film. You Living know, that day. Change that. You've got uh, the Marvin Hamlish one, of course. Mm. And uh, and David Arnold did a great job continuing it on. I, th- I think a lot of fans would have would have loved him to just stay on. Oh, uh, yeah. Another way, mm. wouldn't mm. it? But... Um, yeah, for me, I think we, we've been watching them all in the cinema every week, and just to hear, oh. I mean, particularly Thunderball and You Only Live Twice, these last two, it's just on a different level. You know, you, you're yeah. so lucky. You've got Sean Connery, you've got Japan or Bahamas, yeah. Ken Adams sets, you know, yeah. and then you've got John Barry's music. And I think those, I think the two songs from Thunderball are amongst my very, very favourite. The yeah. The... Living Daylights, If There Was a Man, and the title song, absolutely love it. I, I'm a big fan of Moonraker, the song. I love the I love the ballads, uh, the <laughs> but I can't, no, I couldn't I couldn't choose one. I yeah. mean, even the one like John Barry himself said he wasn't keen on the man with the gun, the gun, but I think it's brilliant. I think it works well, brilliantly the, for the, the scores. There's some good bits, definitely some good bits yeah. in the score as well. There is, let's be honest, there isn't a bad John no, Barry score no. for, for mm. at all, let alone for Bond, but. That they all they all are so different actually. When you you, it's hard really to compare like the Living Daylights with yeah. Goldfinger or Thunderball because they yeah. are so different. Yeah. Whilst yet being under the same banner, mm. you know it's. Um, I I do think though if you're being hypercritical, I I guess I would say and and bear in mind when I say this that View to Kill and Living Daylights are definitely two of my favourite Barry scores. But he does start to to recycle stuff within the films a bit more as he goes on, you know, like things like um, he's dangerous. are also kind of the same as the uh, what's the one the ski under the water. Yeah, snow yeah. job. No, no, no. snow <laughs> job. Snow snow job, job yeah, yeah. yeah, and then Golden Gate fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same theme three times. To- yeah, but yeah, but that's a great theme. Yeah, but yeah, it, yeah. you know, he do- I don't think he does as much of that in the earlier films, mm. um, particularly, but um. But no, but I mean, The Living Diaries is still just a fantastic score. And what's great about it is that there's there's the two extremes, I think, are brilliant. I think like the chase music of, of Living Diaries is really groovy, yeah. fantastic, in, incredible use of the theme tune that, you know, da, 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 da. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like with that beat underneath, oh. brilliant. Wow. But then, you know, all the, all the stuff in um, uh, Afghanistan and stuff, all that kind of really almost... Um, uh, so what's so not what's the word I'm looking for? I can't think of the word, but that you know, all that kind of really epic music, yeah. Mm. Um, you know, is, is all like kind of almost like Lawrence of Arabia type, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. sweeping, yeah, sweet, yeah. Mass, massive string sounds and tunes. It's it's just incredible when you put that on, and you know, it, it just blows your mind. Warren, can I ask you, um, your thoughts on the particularly the three most recent scores since, since, um. David Arnold's era. Mm. Um, I mean, it'd be interesting to see what you thought about David Arnold as well. But because I, I think there's been a been a bit of a shift in that. Uh, perhaps what the biggest shift is is in terms of giving the amount of power given to the director, so that they then say who they want as composer, which is how it often works. And so when mm. Sam Mendes came on, obviously he's a very, you know, you know, renowned director, and he would have said, I imagine, Thomas Newman's my normal director. Uh, sorry, composer. I want him involved. And then I think for No Time to Die, originally he had, was it Dan Roma? Um, mm, before, yeah. as he often does, Hans Zimmer came in as, you know, sort of emergency. 
So I just wondered your thoughts on particularly those last three scores. And so the, there's kind of again, there's there's kind of two sides to the questions. You know, my own like my own uh, emotional reaction as a mm. as a music lover, yeah. as a fan of Bond, and then there's the kind of more of the 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 read up kind of you know what I know from talking to people and 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 stuff, oh, right. as well, yeah. which kind of you know you you understand more why some decisions are made. You know, for example as you right, quite rightly pointed out, the reason that Thomas Newman got it was absolutely because Sam Mendes is that that's who they work yeah. together. Do I like his scores? No, I, I don't. I mean, I really, I'm not a fan of them at all. In fact, I've tried to like them so much over the years. There are elements in them, both films, mm. that, where there are bits that I think, oh yeah, that, you know, I like that, that bit. And, you know, the opening pre-credits uh, uh, music for Spectre, I think is brilliant. Um, there's some mm. stuff in Rome that I think is really, really good. Yeah. There's um, the, the uh, my, you know, it's been a while since I've done this and I'm trying, my brain's not really working well today, but you know, the coffin scene in, in um, Skyfall, it's got, it's got a name, the, the track. Um, oh, let me think. Um, <laughs> sort of British sounding one. Yeah. 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 yeah they're kind of, yeah. Yeah. Kind of that chorale. Um, uh, that's uh, it'll come to me in a minute. The name of the queue. Um, but it's, uh, I, I think that that's really, really good. But a lot of the other stuff, it, it just leaves me a bit cold. And I, I think what it is over the years, the, the way that film music is kind of being written, it's moving, moving away from, it's moved away from the um, harmonic tension that Barry used to create yeah. with these chords and everything else to more of a rhythmic tension. Yeah, and yeah. that's kind of, kind of a, a thing across all kind of modern action movies. You know, if you think of the end of Skyfall, a lot of that kind of last scene around the Thames, you've all got, you've got that kind of really hard rhythmic, you know, that's, that's tension because it's like, you know, kind of that makes you tense. Yeah. So it creates the, the emotional reaction in the audience. But it, when you come out, you don't walk down the street going, you guys come out of Thunderball going, da, 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 da. yeah, oh, God. yeah. You'll live twice last night. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah, yeah. all those tunes. Um, and, but, you know, you're also you're comparing Thomas Newman, who's a, obviously a talented composer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Me, but you're comparing <laughs> the, probably the greatest theme, the, you know, tune uh, writer of all time in John mm, I agree. Film, film music. Although John Williams is amazing and writes probably mm. more epic scores in terms of just writing a simple, beautiful melody. Yeah. You know everything John Barry wrote in his films. There's, there's a kind of melodic feel to it that you know every single little element is memorable. Yeah. You yeah, sing it, it back. Whereas Thomas Newman has come out and said that his approach is that it needs to um, accentuate and accompany what's on the screen at the time, but it shouldn't distract and it shouldn't be it shouldn't be memorable in his opinion. You know it should it should it's almost like in M's office, you've got all those decorations in the background that you don't actually really notice until the 50th time you've watched mm, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But they, you're very much aware of it. It's the yeah. scene dressing, but your focus is is on what the, the dialogue and what's going on between the two the two main yeah. you know protagonists. Uh, and that's his approach. And I, I I don't like that approach for Bond, but I understand mm. that it is a mm. legitimate way of of scoring a film. And there are people out there that that really like. Uh, Thomas Newman score. Uh, moving on to the, to the latest one, I, I think the reason that Hans Zimmer picked it up, and I can see him coming back and doing the next one, and possibly, possi or possibly someone of a similar kind of ilk. I mean, there's not really anybody out there that's got his street cred. But the thing with 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 him that he brings a bit like now every choice of of person that performs the song is that there's a PR machine that comes with yeah. that. Mm. Yeah. that really helps push and propel the film to more people and sell mm. get, you know, get more bums on seats and you know whenever you're on facebook and you see these debates about who the next or you know you, the question that you'll probably ask me at some point is who do i want to record the next bond song it's got to the point where it, it the opinion of who you'd like to do it is completely irrelevant you can oh, yeah. almost go on instagram and just look up who's got the most followers yeah. And that's where probably where your money could go because from a point of view and, and I, you know, someone that tries to market concerts, I understand it makes complete, you know, business sense, mm. marketing sense to go, 
Billie Eilish has got, however, you know, 400 million followers or whatever on Instagram. Plus, she's, she's approaching a demographic which is going to help get more people in because people like you, the four of us are all, you know, we're all a sold seat. You know, we're easy. Yeah. You don't have to market to us. You know that we're going to go. Yeah. But for a film like um, No Time to Die to be a success and kind of hit the billion dollar figure, which they need, they really need to get in that next yep. generation. And the, the angle for that is somebody like Billie Eilish. So that's never going to change. And I, mm-hmm. like the real hardcore Bond fans like us find that hard to deal with because, you know, there's, there's, there's those that would just have Shirley Bassey back every single time. Even <laughs> now there's people. That <laughs> yeah, 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 there is, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. And she's amazing, but, you know, you, you're not going to... Um, you're not no. going to achieve the goal that they're trying to achieve. The thing is that um, I absolutely agree. Um, I, th- I do feel that Bond as a franchise is unique from, like I like, I, I understand how action music has changed over the last decade or so, but like the tuxedo and like, you know, the shaken, not stirred, the pre-title sequence, well, these things belong to Bond and, mm. you know, the music is one of those things. I don't think it's, I don't think the music is something that should be cast aside or reduced yeah. in any way. I don't yeah. think that, and, and I understand Like that. you wouldn't do for a Star Wars film. You no, wouldn't. exactly. Sorry, it's, it's, yeah, it's, that classic score, don't you? Yeah, exactly. And um, even if we're going sort of in a rhythmic drum action um, fashion at the moment, I think what the Bond films need to do more now is think we need to be creating things that are timeless. We need to be yeah. creating things that are going to last decades. Mm. And I'm sure, you know, when you look at your repertoire, you, you're, you're doing music that means stuff to so many over mm. spanning decades. And whether you can do that with music from Thomas Newman. No, um, we'd never and, do any Thomas and, Newman. And, and I'm a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, no. I'm a Newman, no. I'm a Newman fan and I'm a, oh, I'm, yeah, a Zimmer, yeah. I'm a huge Zimmer fan. But I don't think either of them have made much timeless music there that you'd be playing decades and would be sampled in songs and things like that. And I, I just want them to get that bigger picture, um, that bigger picture right. And it comes back to melodies and harmonies and things like that. Um, and that that's my own honest uh, point of view on the music. I think the music, and obviously I don't need to tell you, Warren, the, the music is such a huge piece of the... It's not just something that you upgrade to fit modern action films the music itself is a character of the bond you know mm. it's as much a character as m and money penny and it's as much a part of the fabric i think you've i think harry i think you've like really captured and articulated my feelings really well on it because what you said there really highlights i think what i was trying to say earlier on in, in the the music even zimmer score and i actually did actually really like Zimmer's score, in, especially in comparison. It was much better than, than the mm. two prior, yeah, in my yeah. opinion. But you're right. It's very, I think it it was really enjoyable in the moment, more enjoyable than new ones in the moment, but it's not timeless. Mm. And all the mm. other scores that we've been talking about, like particularly obviously the barrier ones, but even Live and Let Die, yeah. Dry, mm. Dry is only a bit of a, an acquired taste, and I mm. really like it. But <laughs> yeah. all these other ones, they're, they're, they're all definitely timeless. But but, you know, I think that um, Zimmer's one will be one that it was really enjoyable at the time, but it's not one you're going to put on a lot. Mm. But, but mm-hmm. I do think there was a, a real conscious effort there to try and bring a lot of or some of the traits that we want as Bond fans. And in some ways, I actually felt they probably went a little bit too on the nose with it by just shoe like. Well, yeah, the honor Majesty's music. Yeah. What about that? <laughs> well, it felt shoehorned in, I thought, but. Mm. It's one of those ones I've gone backwards and forwards with. I don't know about you guys, but there was one point when I thought it was it really was just too on the nose. And then I then I went through a period where I loved the film. I thought it was the best film I've seen in years. And I, I really got it. And then I've now kind of more gone somewhere in between. I, I liked I'm definitely a fan of No Time to Die. But I I think that what they need to do is take the formula and create new moments, not take yeah. moments yeah. that were previously brilliant and go oh it's this is almost yeah. a two for one deal here we can just mm. take that idea and just stick it in yeah. this film and we're yeah. gonna get yeah yeah like like for example roger you never see roger in an aston martin because they're not i know it's a bit different because he was you know there wasn't such a gap but like he was creating his own yeah don't you know, iconic moments he, yeah. you know it, the car we've talked about in the spy who love me 
that that was his goal finger. That was him making new iconic moments. And I think that's yeah. what we'd like to see from for for the new film rather than yeah, sort of half half harking back to the past, but then also trying to do new things like you know. And I'm not saying I disagree with all these things, but you know, M dying, Felix dying, um, mm. Bond having a child, and then ultimately Bond dying. If you know what I mean. Blofeld, yeah. Are, yeah. <laughs> Blofeld, yeah. So yeah. You know, you know what's a good example of, of getting it right? It's it's like in M's office in um, No Time to Die, having a painting of the previous M on the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an example of how you do it right, yeah. I think. Absolutely. Yeah, subtle, because, isn't it? Yeah. It, and I think with some of the things they did with this with that film, we're getting a bit more into the film rather than the music, but mm. I think it applies with the music, is that I think I think what they did was they were trying to tick two boxes. They were trying to make bond more current and incorporate more um liberal things as we know that kind of, i hadn't got a problem with any of that by the way i thought you know i thought that lestan lynch's character was brilliant and all of that stuff mm. but they they kind of ticked a lot of boxes to try and appeal to a wider demographic and make bond more current but then i think what they've tried to go is how do we not alienate our yeah mm. our core yeah. kind of bond fan? and they've gone oh okay let's stick in on the Massey secret service because they're all that's their favorite film and they'll love it and it's like We've we've got a bit more about us than that, that yeah. we don't need it to be like psh, psh, round the face. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, for me, what the scene when they play the um over and out kind of cue from Majesties, I, I can um I can kind of understand it because he's bringing coming back into Her Majesty's service, but yeah. I would have thought it'd have been more appropriate to if they really wanted to do it was to bring back the 007. Yes. Thing. Yeah. 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 Because that is for different bonds. You know? It is, yeah. yeah it doesn't is, belong to that a specific can be spread movie. Away. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. because that's the thing, isn't it? Majesties is a theme for that movie, but I yeah. think the way they approached it was that they were kind of think of it as a theme for him being in the Majesty service. But I, 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 I feel for them a little bit because I kind of, I also understand what they're trying to do with it. I mean, they're trying to give us something that they think we want, which is really cool that they're trying to do that. Because sometimes I don't think they've always done that. I think they've kind of mm. got a bit wrapped up in what yeah. you know what they want to do rather than what's best for what we kind of want. You know, as the end of the day, we are the customers, aren't we? I just mm. can't mm. think it was Hans Zimmer's decision it, that, to put the On Imagine's music in, whereas before the music was all down to John Barry, wasn't it? He he wasn't told what to put in where, was he? I don't think that Zimmer was told to put this in, though. I think it was his choice. Yes. What, oh, yeah. what even to use "We Have All the Time in the World" over the end credits. I'm not sure that, about that. One. It's I'm in not... the script, isn't it? Where that those lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm, I that, that I'm sure that I'm sure you're right about that one. I'm sure that probably came. But I, as I understand it, a lot of the other that I've heard, that all the other stuff was his choice, like bringing in the Majesty's theme when. Yeah, the that one. Yeah, yeah. Was him and and uh, mm. I believe it was his idea to bring in the, the little bit of um vespers theme which oh, yeah, that's good that's, that's right that's yeah. right yeah that was yeah. that's the kind of thing isn't it that that made sense and it yeah. was just yeah. enough it was like yeah. oh yeah brilliant mm. so what would you do going i mean you you know if it were you not well not what do you think they will <laughs> do but what would you what would you do musically composer wise for i mean it sort of feeds into what you would do with the films in general but what what would you do composer wise and uh singer wise i don't know i'd be interested to know your thoughts well composer wise i would go i wouldn't go back with zimmer definitely and i, I ultimately i would always number one i would go past david arnold because he's proven he does a brilliant job he gets it but i don't think they're gonna and i think it's i think for whatever they've made up their mind they've moved on and I think it's a real shame, but so if they're not going to go back, I would like to see them. I mean, my, my first choice really, um, oh, my mind is going blank today. Um, trying to think of his name, the guy that did solo and, uh, Incredibles. Oh. Yeah. Michael oh, Giacchino. Oh. Michael Giacchino. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 He did the rogue one. Rogue yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and actually, I thought I thought I don't know what you guys thought of Rogue One. I thought that was not yeah, I said solo. Yeah, of course, my brain's not working tonight, folks. It's fine, I'm really yeah. it's okay. um, <laughs> I thought the Rogue One score was really, really good, but he, yeah. I think he had quite a, a short time frame to turn mm. it around, and there are bits of it yeah. that don't quite work. And I think yeah. people it, really went for him. They you know, got a bit of negative press about that. They really went right. for stuff that didn't work, but actually, the stuff that did work, I thought, was brilliant. Yeah, he replaced I, I, Alexandra 
Uh, Who's yeah. also a great composer yeah. and would be a, a good choice. But um, he's done Lost and he's yeah. lost music. He's and, done other uh, franchises, uh, hasn't he? So, of the Apes. It's yeah, Mission Impossible. He's done. Yeah. He's, he he's, gets it. Yeah, he knows how to respect a franchise's music. Yeah. yeah. I'm just looking up. I can't think of. I might say, but I I don't know whether it, it's been a long day or something. But my brain's gone mad as well. Who, who's the guy that did um, uh, the Mandalorian? That's another one that's gone from yeah, Ludwig Lud- Ludwig Göransson. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you tip. As soon as you got it, my tip of my tongue, I've got it. <laughs> um, I thought I thought his music was amazing on that, and yeah. uh, I've watched quite a few bits and pieces of him on YouTube and, and, and his composing methods and stuff. And that guy's seriously a genius. Um, yeah. And I think he would do something really interesting. And he can write thematic material as well. Like that mm. theme is one of only a few handful of examples I can really think of in recent times where someone's actually written a, them, a thematic theme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's, and it, and it's good. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't go back with, with Hans Zimmer, but I think they will. I think that's where they'll go. Interesting. Um, do you, do you know what? I'm I'm not even I'm not even going to give a name for the song uh, for the song choice. But what I will say is that I think they have to, and I really hope that they go with an upbeat song to start. Yes, mm. yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, you, you, know have I mean? to, you need one as well, don't you? Yeah, if you think about Daniel Craig's, it's just yeah. got more. The songs have got more depressing. Than yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If yeah. You start with a depressing one with the next one. Where the hell can they yeah. go from there? You know. Even though you know, Casino Royale is quite a heartbreaking film in many ways, but the theme songs yeah. it gives it kick such ass. a yeah. It gives it such a kick, and with that title yeah. sequence, it makes it so good. Um, can you remember how you felt about it when the first time you saw it? That what, song. That- and in, in the, the context of the film, when you saw it at the cinema. Oh, like, well, the, the yeah. title sequence is brilliant as well, isn't it? I think, so. yeah, I think it's one of the best. And I thought, it, wow, it, you know. Yeah, this it, is... <clears throat> I had my concerns going into the film and that in the early stages won me over. Yeah, I, because I, I remember I, I took me by first time I saw it, I was a bit like, oh, this is doesn't really necessarily feel like a normal Bond song. No. But it's got to be actually one of the best, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's up there. Certainly in recent years for me, it's, yeah. it's right up there. Yeah, it's really, really it's good. best, isn't it? The Daniel Craig here is best, I think. Yeah. And, yeah. And, 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 you know, like I say, and I don't think they'll do it where they'll get the composer to be involved in the creation of the song. Well, because... they, did it, they did it with no time to die, though. They did well, it. Did, he just did, played the piano, didn't he, really? Did, uh, no, <laughs> no, he, he orchestrated. He did. He did all the orchestration for the for the strings and all of that. Yeah, yeah. Of that, and there is not. It's not littered like a Barry film, but there is some of that. Yeah, brought into yeah. The yeah. Film. No, I, I, I definitely, I definitely pre- appreciate that. But I mean, like to the, the extent of jo- John yeah. Barry writing the melodies, and then, and then, you know, the song comes from there rather than the other way around. I just can't see that that would happen. You know, giving to. I don't know, Ed Sheeran, heaven forbid. Um, so, you know, <laughs> um, like, oh, this is the melody. You know, th- th- this is the melody I've come up with. You know, now, you know, how can we make a? I just can't see that that would happen. I tell you one thing. I did think with no time to start, what you guys thought, but parking aside anybody's feelings about the actual song, whether they liked it or not, I don't think there's ever been a song actually in the entire series that fed into the narrative of the the film better than that song did Mm. in terms of the lyrics and it, it almost plugs that five year gap between when the train leaves the station to the, when he, that's right. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought that was, that was a really clever and cool thing that they did with that. And, and it just goes to show if you bring these elements in and say, look, this is because they obviously Billy Eilish and Phineas saw that opening sequence yeah. they allowed them to see it they're actually able to 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 put their song in context i should have known i leave alone just goes to show
Was I stupid to love you? Was I reckless to hate? Was it obvious to everybody Some of the songs actually have no relevance at all. <laughs> song, you know, some of the lyrics make no sense at all. You're right though. If it was just a massive upbeat song, after you just just got on the train, and yeah, <laughs> it wouldn't yeah. be right at all. Yeah. Would it? So it has to fit the film, of course. We we actually I don't know if you've seen it, but if you go on YouTube, we actually did a, a song for No Time to Die, an original. We've always been asked, oh, you should write some. We've never done it. We've always done covers, but we've actually got an original. Oh. That we mm. we wrote and recorded before um, Billy Eyes had even been announced, and it is it's an upbeat song, but with it kind of has that um, kind of more downbeat verse, and then goes to the chorus, and it's more mm. of a defiant. Uh, you know, um, no, I'm not gonna because because all we knew at the time when we wrote it was the synopsis that had been released that we knew Bond had yep. left service and that he, mm. you know, he'd split from Madeline and that he was in isolation in in the Caribbean and stuff and. And and I knew I knew from the word go. I I knew if Daniel Craig was coming back, his last film, he was gonna. I just got the vibe from the word go that he was gonna always go by dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we kind of incorporated that all in the song. But yeah, if you get a chance, um, I was gonna I was gonna ask you about that one. You know, obviously with your background in music and your your love of the the music of the franchise, how much you tinker with you know a new villains theme that you've composed in your bedroom or you know some <laughs> yeah. new action. Do are you? Are you always kind of imagining a, a new Bond film with with new music? Do, you, do do melodies come to your head at all? Uh, no, that's not really that's not really my um, area of music. Really, I, I I'm quite quite a I don't know kind of reasonable arranger and orchestrator of other people's work and and performer, obviously. And uh, I'm more the um, the guy that gets everybody and you know right. comes up with the mm. idea and brings it all together. There are guys in in the band. I mean, there's the keyboard player in, in my band, Jez, is a really, really clever composer. And he's done a he's done a few little film music y competitions right. where, you know, if you heard it, you'd be like, Oh, this is this is really I mean, it's really good. It's really, really good. But again, you know, I mean he came into music as a performing amazing keyboard player. I mean, he's on tour with Susie Quattro and things like that. So he's pretty mm. busy with that. But um, does a bit, a little bit of composing on the side and enters a few little things and stuff. But I mean, the world of composing is 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 such a closed shop for film music composing, and it yeah. there's quite a lot of articles going around about just why it's such a such a disaster zone at the moment for, for I think for music that they're producing, because you know a lot of the time they 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 get so so much. Um, stricter guidelines to write to and, and there's nowhere near the uh, room for maneuver right. at least have yeah. and, mm. and in the old days i think you know the when a film kind of got to the composer there wasn't as much editing now as what uh, then as what there is now now there's like a million cuts yeah so yeah. you know the the music is kind of written in a way that it just gets chopped up and moved all the time and it, it's almost like a composer can can compose a score and send it through and and then the editor will will then chop it up however they want it you know mm. you're it must be quite soul destroying as a composer to write yeah. a theme and then when it comes back you know they've maybe turned it around backwards and chopped the middle section out and then sliced it onto the end if you think about even actually did not you can't say it never happened because if you even think about dr no the James Bond theme in the in the titles has been sliced and diced up into <laughs> a completely different order hasn't it Mm. so you know imagine how that must feel when you've got i mean those two minutes of the james bond theme that john barry well let's be honest that's that he wrote but yeah he, <laughs> he legally didn't write yeah. no yeah, yeah. he arranged and orchestrated i'll say that yeah. sorry yeah. monty don't, don't. <laughs> uh you know you, you imagine if you i mean that is two minutes of perfection absolute genius perfection lightning in a bottle stuff you send it off to the film when you go and watch the films 
they've just bastardized it into this completely different thing. Imagine how you'd feel. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, so you've said License to Kill is your favourite to play. Um, mm. I presume that as a as a trumpet player because of the big brass opening, mm. well, you know, and the... Uh, oh, uh, so is that why? And also, what are, your, what are your other ones? I'm sure you love playing them all, but what, what are your other favourites to play? Yeah, no, the reason for License to Kill is actually nothing to do with, with me, actually. Oh, it's right. more about the the overall thing as the band, in particular for Kerry, you know, you'll, you'll, when you come to the show in a couple of weeks, you'll see it. It's, um, she just takes, she really penetrates right into you and it, and yeah, just takes you off into, into the I mean, stars. Uh, yeah, I've seen the yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 it's yeah. really good. Only on YouTube, yeah. sadly. So well, yeah, yeah. Can't wait yeah. to see it live. That's the yeah, thing. yeah. So the thing, and I always say to these people as well, like, the thing with Cue the Music is that there's, there's a, there's a thing that you just can't get from YouTube, and it's yeah. when you're in the room and you feel the vibe that that we have with the audience, where it kind of works in the circle, where they can feel the energy, and so they get more pumped up, and the more pumped up they get, the more we feed off of that. Mm. Yeah. yeah, And you kind of you, by the end of the show, you've kind of just been taken on this emotional mm. and adrenaline fueled oh, journey. Worry. That just doesn't come across in a in a in a video, but that's really encapsulated. Never more so than license to kill, and you know we get to the end of that, and there's just this almighty release valve, and the audience <laughs> goes off as they kind of, you know, you know celebrate it or whatever. And it that's Whoa. yeah, it's real hairs in the back of the moment, mm. uh, hairs in the back of the neck yeah. moment. Say that somebody tries to make a move on you. No, no, we're not doing that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've yeah. only got so much time, haven't you? There's yeah. so well, many the only, songs. The only and... song we don't do is Die Another Day. And I, we used to do it. I was going to ask us. <laughs> <laughs> we used to do it, but it was the only thing I ever got complaints about was people saying, please don't do that. So I was this old, this great video from some, we used to do a thing at the, in the early theatre shows where people used, we used to get videos of people coming out, their reactions. And there's this lovely old couple <laughs> And I, I think they were they were not such a fan of the modern music and said, oh, the first half was amazing. Absolutely. Because you're still in chronological order. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. First half was absolutely amazing. We loved it. it was brilliant. <laughs> Second half, waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I just think it was like, in Dying of the Day was kind of a big part of that. And, and yeah, more and more people were kind of like, oh, do you... Do you really have to do it? So I kind of got rid of it, and that meant we could put more things in. You know, we we do yeah. different mm. different tunes every time now. Um, every concert we do something different in those little gaps. So it could be if there was a man, it could be Dirty Love, it could be oh. <laughs> you know, Gone Seventy Seven. You know, oh. 
we had a bit of a, a diamonds year um, last year and, and going into Old Shot this year. So we've, we've done a few cues from Diamonds Off Forever. Oh, it was quite really, right. Obviously, yeah. the 50th anniversary wasn't it yeah. last year. Um, so that that was that was really really good. And um, you know, I'm, I feel like this last tour, I'm I'm just scratching all the little itches I've got left and yeah, ticking the boxes not. off. And by the time we close in october we'd have done well over a hundred cues and songs from a wow. series wow. i mean most of them are on youtube now yeah um which you'll know no no one will ever match that just because they're not mad enough <laughs> it's, it's amazing to think that you're covering 60 years of music that yeah. really is yeah. that really is incredible but the, the great thing is as well i mean it's like the bands they're not the there's the sort of geek level of me or you that you know so i'll sometimes i'll turn up with a new obscure song that i've come out you know like like dirty love and they're like <laughs> what the hell is this? but then like carrie and matt it's their favorite song you know they're always yeah. like oh, can we do dirty love i'm like what? <laughs> we've, got to, we've got to change it up a little bit but the old couple leaving <laughs> yeah <laughs> dirty love was too much yeah yeah. No, but actually, do you know what it always goes down so well oh yeah, yeah. Well, it does yeah yeah of course yeah. it does it's, a, it's you know it's a really good foot tapping uplifting yeah. song isn't it What sort of pressure is there to keep it absolutely faithful to the original? Or do you like? To, I know you do a bit more jazzy, don't you? Often. No, no, we don't. Don't no, <laughs> no, we don't do that. Don't say that. You'll put people off. No, we did one CD where we did yeah. jazz versions, just yeah. something different. We did it and, and released it. Um, but no, that's not our remit at all. Normally, no, it's it's absolutely as as close to and, and I would mm. say the layers of authenticity and, and detail are so deep that they're actually not, you know, not, you can't perceive it as an audience member. Like if you start peeling the layers off and, and I, and I sort of showed you how deep it goes down to, you know, like quave, like tiny, yeah. tiny notes, quavers if, from your music, you know, it would, it would blow, it would blow your mind. But the yeah, thing yeah. is, is that whilst you can't necessarily isolate one thing, when you add it all into the mixing pot, I think that's what really gives it that, that mm. flavor that, that why people who are Bond fans come and go, you know, just come and go, wow, because of, you know, it's that time and level of detail that we go to down to the second keyboard player playing one bar in the middle of a piece and i'm like no 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 it's not like that it's got to be like this yeah. mm. but mm -hmm. within that there is certain things where we do just take a little bit of a, of a flavor to it and it might just be taking the energy of a particular thing and just turning it up one notch in a live setting um you get that to, an, to a degree anyway you take the bond songs which are amazing and you're taking them from like a, a studio recorded kind of um sanitized disciplined perf perfect performance in a studio and then putting it into a live adding in adrenaline and an yeah. atmosphere and passion and and all of those kind of things and then the interaction with the audience and it lift automatically lifts it from that point of view because same if they if the originals when you hear those done by the by the original recording artist live it's just a different vibe that you know you just in the atmosphere so yeah it's it's authentic as absolutely 99.9 percent .9 just with that or 99 percent. but then with that one percent where we just inject a little bit of a flair and and um you know just just fun things really just to kind of lift it mm. a little bit further in the live setting the vocalist is obviously different but it's quite nice yeah. to have the same ones isn't it so there's a, a running theme through it as well see, see that's a great example because you know, you talk about authenticity. If you try to do a James Bond tribute band where 
Yeah. You had a, a Shirley Tom, Bassey. Tom art. Jones impressionist. Yeah. First of all, it would sound <laughs> bloody awful. Yeah, yeah. You know, it would just sound so. It would be, pain, it would be painful. Yeah, yeah. But secondly, you'd either have to have 26, 24, or 25 different artists. Or you'd have to have someone who could do all of them. Yeah, how not. would you find a male vocalist that could do Tom Jones, Louis Armstrong, <laughs> and um, Louis Armstrong. Monroe? Chris Cornell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah good, luck, good luck with that. So you know, but, but they but they do they do little just little things with it. Like mm. Matt will do like a little bit of grit and gravel in, yeah. in We Have All the Time in the World, but it doesn't sound corny. And Kerry will mm. do a little bit of the extra flamboyant show showy kind of thing with the shirley bassey song but it's not a parody mm. oh no it's a winning combination it is it really is the the classic music with the live feel and that's what we're looking forward to most mm. that one so one big question that yeah you know, it always comes up in my head surrender or tomorrow never dies <laughs> uh, uh, definitely surrender, but I do what? like. I go. do love Tomorrow Never Dies. I yeah. think it's a really great song. But yeah, I mean, surrender. Actually, I would probably put it top ten um, for me of, of songs overall. I think it. I think it's great. Yeah. What about what about all of you guys? I'm just glad we got them both. Yeah, yeah. No, I just mm. it, it's that's it's what Back to Math says. In those days, even world is enough. You've got you know we mm. have only yourself to blame. I can't put you don't do that one, do you? I, I can't. We have done it. Yeah, I'm yeah. Only myself it. to blame. Yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll yeah, we've done it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd love to hear that. Yeah. It's uh, on YouTube if you want to have a have a look. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> I don't want to keep asking which ones you're doing because I want there to be a bit of mystery, obviously. But yeah. you, I wouldn't tell you it to us, yeah, Warren. We won't be doing well, I can tell you won't be doing that. Uh, um, oh. Are we doing we're doing we're, we're saving doing, that for London. The big surprise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but the, the new ones at Bradford are brand new ones that we've never done. So, oh, oh gosh. Gosh. say that fantastic. Yeah, but, yeah, but I think I think Surrenders is, a, is an absolutely mm. a, a, an, an absolutely awesome awesome song. Brilliant. Well, before before you go, Warren, please just sort of tell us what dates your concerts are on, and uh, how you can get tickets, and you know who's going to be there as well. Yeah, so we've got five dates uh, left, and ridiculously, I can't remember. I'm, I'm actually <laughs> on my own website. So if you, if anybody's listening, wants to know, if you go to cuethemusicshow.com, dot uh, apart from anything else, you can go and um, uh, and have a look at all the videos. If you go on there, there's like a videos tab uh, with like over a hundred of all the cues, and we, I mean, there's everything from things like. Dawn Raider, Fort Knox, to the Laser Beam, <laughs> to Wonderverts, World War Three, Drop uh, in the Ocean. There's a Live and Let Die Suite thing. Um, oh I mean, I could sit here and, and just read out yeah. all the titles, but there's so, so, so many. And yeah, you can, if you go on the website, there's um, a whole list of them and, and you click on the song and it takes you straight to YouTube to watch it. So mm. that's so worth doing. But also there's a See the Show tab as well, which yeah. gives the dates um so the ones we've got left we're at bradford which of course uh i'm looking looking forward mm -hmm. to seeing you guys at which yes. is sunday the 12th of june uh we're in cheltenham on sunday the 3rd of july we're at heaver castle in kent on the 5th of august friday 5th of august buxton opera house on monday the 29th of august which is a bank holiday monday and then finally um we, it's not on sale just yet should be end of the month we're going to be sunday 23rd of october in the west end at and is this not just perfect at her majesty's theater oh, oh. 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 wow so apt oh yeah. that's brilliant it's going to be emotional oh, yeah. It really yeah. yeah it really is um it's going to be a mega concert we that one will be double size band with strings and everything and yeah, music that music that we've that will just blow everyone's mind. Yeah, it'll be a good mm. one. My word. Well, we'll we'll give details and links to those. Uh, really do encourage you to come. We've been waiting all lockdown to yeah. try and actually go and see you guys. Mm. Oh. Um, and it's been brilliant watching the videos on YouTube to keep us going in the meantime. So please please do follow uh, Cue the Music and and catch them. But catch them live while you still can. Yeah, and that's yeah. exactly what we want to see. I like we keep saying the music is you know one of the top I don't know two or three things about the whole franchise that we love and it wouldn't be yeah. the same without it 
He's got an amazing back catalogue. These guys are terrific. The vocalists, the instrumentations, you know, the uh, the compositions themselves, the arrangements that Warren's done himself. It's it's all part of the fabric of Bond. And of course, Bond girls are, are hosting them as well. So, mm. and at, at great venues, at great venues. I mean, one that the Hever Castle, Hever Castle one. I mean, that's that's astonishing. But even yeah. in ending in the West End, there, that's that's going to be something special. Mm. We we will see you at Bradford, Warren. And we, we oh, can't right. wait to see you in, in person. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for having yeah, me tonight, well, gents. It's been really, really good. It's good to thank you. Very nice of you to have me on, but good just to chat about all things Bond with you with three. Always. Yeah. Yeah. Love James Bond. Love the music. Yeah. <laughs>